selection from our choir. He said to them, 
My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. Going a little further, he fell on, on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what thou will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. He came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. that you would pray with us for a little while. Father in heaven, we offer unto you, Lord, our very best in praise and meditation. We offer unto you our very best in life. God, it seems not much to ask if we would do these things. But Lord, you have given us your very best. In fact, the word reminds us that it is every good and perfect gift that has come down from our Father. These things, Lord, you have done, you've done because you love us. Lord, you've denied us no good thing. All things have been done in excellence and to your glory. And Father, we pray tonight that as this people have gathered in this sacred and holy place, that someone would be saved. God, we pray tonight that someone would come out of darkness and yeah. be enveloped in the marvelous light of the Lord. God, we pray tonight that as we lift up our voices, that these voices will rise to your ear and rise into your nostrils, rise into your presence, and that they will God, we pray that our meditation, our very sincere thoughts, will be found pleasing in your sight. Now, God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sin. We simply declare, Lord, have mercy. Mercy because mercy is sometimes pays. Mercy is necessary for us because, Lord, we stumble down here. God, you washed 
Amen. Amen. How many of y'all feel welcome to this place? I want to get two or three you clap in your hands. How many of y'all truly feel welcome to be in the Lord's house on tonight? Can you just do me a favor and stand with your feet if you can and throw your hands in there and say, Lord, I just thank you.
Thank y'all for the two or three that clapped. Amen. 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 It's offering time. Y'all know he's able. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Tonight we want you to give your very best. Churches United for Service is doing a great work. Amen. To meet the needs of our people. Amen. And we, in order to do that, we need your help. So we ask tonight that you give your very best. Amen? Amen. 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 So as um, Pastor Mitchell will say, I know y'all see a lot of George Washington. Amen. Amen. But we'd like to see some Franklins. Amen. Right. And others. Amen. So please give your very best on tonight and give them to the Lord because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 Let this time I ask our officers to come forward and take charge. Amen.
We thank you, Lord God, for these gifts, these offerings, Lord God. For we know, Lord God, every good and perfect gift comes from above. God, we ask you, Lord God, to bless each and every person who gave and each and every person who that didn't have to give. God, we ask you to bless this offering, Lord God, that it may be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray.
Church United for service. They gave us a donation to help the ministry last year. So I want to tell you that the money that you do give to them, it does go back to the community.
to you tonight for Thanksgiving on our own. God, we thank you tonight for this opportunity for allowing us to break the bread of life. So God, we pray tonight that the ears of your people are anointed to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to them tonight. God, I pray that I may decrease so that the Spirit of God that's on the inside may increase. Use me this day, dear God, as a vessel of clay. Me for the Master Jesus at this appointed time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We thank God for this opportunity to preach the word one more time. Amen. Before we get into the preaching, I want to just let y'all know that I do have a little bit of manners. We thank God for the angel again of this house, Pastor Dixon. Amen. We thank God for my friend and my brethren. Pastors of different churches, we thank God for them. We, we, we need to let them know that they are our brothers and, 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 and they are important to us. We thank God for our brothers. Give all pastors a hand. Would you do me and just help me thank Minister Braxton and Youth for Truth? First lady, my wife is in the house. She's always with me. She always yeah. got my back. So don't y'all start now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I have some in my family. I'm going to preach in just a moment. But uh, we thank God for uh, uh, the reason that I'm here. All right. I'm talking about in the land of the living. Right. My, my mother and my father, Reverend Paul.
the truth of the matter is your hearing that everybody has an assignment. Yes, that's right. Everybody has a responsibility. And just in case you think I'm talking because I got this, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, round verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God had appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. And after that, miracles. And then gifts of healing and helps and administration and varieties of tongues. Yes, sir. We all have an assignment. Well, and just to press my case a little bit further, Romans chapter 12, somewhere around verse number 4 says, for we have many members in one body. That's right. That's but right. all members do not have the same function. Uh -huh. So we being many are one body in Christ. That's right. And individual members of one another. I'm just trying to tell you that we all have an assignment. That's right. Uh, just in case you still think I'm talking because I got this. Ephesians says, and he gave some to be apostles. He gave some to be prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints unto the work of ministry, unto the building of the body of Christ. Yeah. All I'm just trying to tell you, you might not think you have an assignment, but we all have an assignment. You you might not realize it right now, but you have an assignment. Right. 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 You think that you're just existing, but I come to tell you tonight that you're not here by accident. You're not here just to breathe air. You have an assignment on your life. Yeah, yeah. You have, don't know what it is. You just have not discovered it yet. And just in case you think I'm just talking, y'all, the Bible says in Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, he says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew all about you. And before uh -huh. you were yeah. even born, Yes, yes. There are times when the assignment affects 
my health. There are times when the assignment affects my home. Sometimes the assignment even affects my head. Come on. My mind. Y'all don't talk to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever wondered why you're reading more about pastors leading the ministry more so than ever before? Have you ever wondered how you're reading and, and seeing more pastors committing suicide now than ever before? It's because of the weight of the assignment. Mm -hmm. Pastor Coleman said it last night, and if you didn't hear it last night, I'm going to tell you again. You need to pray for your pastor. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. keep your pastor lifted up in prayer. Because mm -hmm. truth be told, that there is no lack of statistics, y'all, about pastors and depression and burnout and all things that come along with the assignment. They're, 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 according to the Schaefer Institute, 70% of pastors constantly fight depression. 71% of pastors are experiencing burnout. So how do you handle life when helping you is hurting me? How do you handle life when, 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 when pouring into you is leaving me in God uh, help me tonight. Come on. In, in, in 2013, a uh, young pastor in his mid-30s killed himself outside of his home because of the weight of the assignment. Y'all just hang with me. I'm, 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 I'm going to y'all right just a moment. He, he sent his wife home to church early and he sat in his driveway and killed himself because of the assignment. He killed himself as the congregation waited on him. And in a sermon that is even posted on YouTube right now, he says, I, I, I tried to pray, but I don't feel like God is hearing me. I tried to serve, but I don't feel like God is using me. Can I tell you, y'all, that people that you serve, pastors, sometimes have expectations for you that they can't even place on themselves? <laughs> the assignment gets heavy when you pour into people that won't pour into you. Matthew 1 and 21 says, and you shall bring forth a son, uh -huh. and you shall call 
his name Jesus. Yeah. Because he's going to save people from their sins. That's the assignment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. But there are some things that happen on this Thursday in Passion Week God, Help us, sir. that we can glean from. The, 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 the text is tailored to teach us that if we're going to be able to handle the assignment, yeah. if we're going to be able to handle the weight of the assignment, yeah. you've got to do some things. The first thing that I want to tell you that you've got to do, the first thing that the text is tailored to teach us is that you must be able to handle your foes and your fears. Yeah. Come on. Can I tell you about it? Come on. Truth be told, the foes and fears, they go together. Uh, at the time of the text, Jesus is on his way to Gethsemane. It is probably uh, after 6 p.m. Uh, uh, about now. So it was considered night by this time. But, but earlier in the day, the Bible says that Jesus sat at the table with his 12 disciples. And because Jesus was both God and man at the same time, the omniscient part of God knew that there was an enemy sitting at the table with him. Are y'all talking to me tonight? Come on, come on. It, it was in the evening, according to the text, and as they began to eat, the Bible says that Jesus says, the truth is, one of you is going to betray me. Okay. One of you that is sitting at the table with me. Mm. The text is telling the teacher, us y'all, that you can't always your company. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't always dismiss your enemies. Some folk you just got to deal with. Well, y'all not coming in. They, they may get on your nerves. They may, they may, they may push all of your buttons. But there are some folk, though may, they may be your enemy, that they are designed to be y'all not coming in your life. They are necessary. That's why Matthew says that you. not been who he was. Jesus would never have made it where he went. Come on, come on. The, the ultimate goal is he said, for the assignment was Calvary. And, and you need some enemies in order to press you into your destiny. You might not like it with some folk that don't like you. It, it may make you uncomfortable. It may make you cringe every time you get around them. But every now and then, you've got to deal with your Judas. That's why 
drops of blood. It was the blood that we need. If my mama could sing tonight, she would say, I know it. Jesus and the disciples visited the garden. All right. Truth be told that they frequented the garden. They were frequent visitors to the garden. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they went back to the garden because that they knew that that was the way that Judas was known where they were. But this time, this time is different. The text does not describe the previous visits. But I believe, y'all, that those previous visits were inconsequential or they would have recorded them. The text does not describe the previous visits, but I believe that all the other visits were peaceful and prayerful. But this time, this time. there was tension in the air. Yeah. Jesus said in, in verse number 34 that my soul is exceedingly soft. Yeah. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. unto death. And he asked him to just stay right here yeah. and watch with me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, the Son of God, mm. the Savior of the world, yeah. by his own words, is dreading going into the dark. Mm. Jesus, the Son of God, yeah. that times previous had visited the garden without any consequences. This time, this time, he's dreading going into the garden. Mm -hmm. But I believe that Jesus knew that it was necessary because he believed that if I don't take this assignment, people are going to be lost. Right. You've got to understand something, Saints of God. That if you don't take time with God, mm -hmm. this is what pushed him to go into the dark. Your assignment is going to ultimately kill you. Y'all talking to me tonight? If you, if you don't take time to get along with God, your assignment will kill you. It, it was almost as if God, this God man was fearful. It was almost as, as if that, that there was conflict between what he knew was the right thing to do with his, and the man part of him, the fearful part of him. Uh, there, were, there were people, people oftentimes y'all fear conflict and difficulty. People oftentimes don't want to uh, have any situation that makes them uncomfortable. People always want everything to be in the right temperature and everything to be in the right atmosphere, but every now and then, When you're going to have to go through yeah. surprise, can you handle your foes? And can you handle your fears right. of what's on them? The second thing that the Texas Challenge to teach us, y'all, is if you're going to deal with the weight of the assignment, mm -hmm. not only do you have to properly handle your foes and your fears, but secondly, Pastor Smith, you've got to learn how to handle your friend. Come on, God. Y'all gonna talk to me tonight? When you read this account in Mark, you will find that Jesus brings 11 disciples with him. Mm -hmm. He brought 11 with him because by this time, Judas has already snuck out the back door That's right. to finish what he has started. Right. He brings 11 of them close to the door. And he says, wait right here. And then he takes with him, y'all, Peter, James, and John a little further to the gate or to the opening of the garden. And then he tells them to wait right here at the entrance of the garden while I go and pray. Can I tell you what the text 
necessary to teach us tonight? He had 12 disciples. 11 of them are on the sea. Three of them are near him. But he's all alone. Pastors, we might have a church full. But we can't count on everybody. It's my quiet religion. We might have a church full, but it's not everybody that we can count on. Amen. Mr. Rudolph McKissick says that everybody you count, you can't count on. That's right. But the fact of the matter is, y'all, it wasn't their fault. That's right. Because let's be honest tonight. Sometimes we expect more from people than they're able to do. Yes, Sometimes, y'all, we put more weight on people than we should. We have to understand that everybody is not equipped to go where God is trying to take us. You've got to hear me. Everybody is not equipped to go where God is trying to take us. There are some folk that are not evil. There are some folk that are not your Judas. There are some folk that have your best interest in heart and pray for you all the time. But they are still not equipped to go where God is trying to take you. There are some things that you've got to handle all by yourself. Sometimes you've got to go it all alone. I come to the God alone. Sometimes you've got to do some things for yourself. Sometimes you need folk to pray for you from afar off. The second thing that this point is telling to teach us is that Jesus needed to be isolated. But he did not want to be alone. Can I come get you? Jesus, the Savior of the world, God himself did not want to be alone. He needed some isolation. Mm -hmm. But he did not want to be alone. Mm -hmm. The text says that he took Peter, James, and John with him to the entrance of the sin. Yes, he knew that he needed them near, near because he didn't want to be alone. Yes, Otherwise, he would have left them with the other disciples. Yes, Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus didn't want to be alone. If Jesus himself understood that he couldn't do this by himself. Now. How much more than you and I act like we are Teflon? How much more than you and I act like we are Superman? We can try to be hard if we want to, but if Jesus needed somebody watching his back, No matter. 
matter what. Come here. You, you, you need some friends that's not going to sleep on you. Amen. And one of the reasons that I'm here tonight is because I've had some friends, some people that knew how to get a prayer through. And you need some friends that not only going to sleep, but going to pray in the meantime. And some of us, y'all, need to thin out our friends because we need some friends that have the ability to get a prayer through. Yeah. We need some friends that when, when, when they ain't got no money, they know how to pray. Yeah. We need some friends that when they ain't got no answers, they know how to pray. Yeah. We, we need some friends that, 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 that when, the, when the rubber meets the road, they might not have anything else, but they know how to lift your name up in prayer. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I'm here tonight, y'all, is I remember as a teenage boy uh, walking upstairs to my house that I was raised in, and I could hear my father pray. And he wasn't just praying any kind of prayer. Uh -huh. but, but I could hear him calling his children by name. Uh -huh. You need to understand that every now and then, uh -huh. you need somebody that even though they don't, they don't think you're in trouble, that has the ability to lift your name up in prayer. Yeah. You need somebody to say, listen, I need you to pray for me. Yeah. How will you handle the weight of the assignment? Yeah. Well. How, how, you have to properly handle your foes and your fears. You have to properly handle your friends. But as I close this message, you, you, you have to have the ability to finish in spite of your friends. You have to have the ability to finish in spite of your friends. Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. That's free. He said, I need y'all to stay here and watch with me. That's free. Yes, sir. Three times he prays, Father, all these things are possible for you. But if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Mm -hmm. That's free. He's saying, God, I, I really don't want to do this. He's saying, God, the assignment may be too much for me. He said, God, there has to be another way. Yeah. I, I'm in so much pain right now that I'm sweating blood. God, is there another way? Well, but, but look at what he says in verse 41 and verse 42 as we get ready to close this message. He says, the time has come yeah. mm -hmm. and the Son of Man am betrayed into the hands of the sinner. Mm -hmm. And he says, get up. Get up. Let's be going mm -hmm. to see my betrayer is here. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, y'all, I'm hurting, right. but I'm not going to run from this assignment. Come on. Yes, Jesus is saying, I'm in pain, yes. but I'm not going to run from this assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus says, I'm doubting, but I'm not going to run from this assignment. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said that, God, you made me for this. Yes. I'm fearful, but I was made for this. Yes. Yeah, I'm fearful, but I'm not going to run from this. Mm -hmm. I'm I was made for this. How do you stare in the face of death and stand there like you're a child of God? You need to realize that you are made for this. How do you stand with folk, smile in your face, and then talk about you behind the back? You need to stand and know that you are made for this. How do you resolve to stand and not run from this assignment? It was his assignment. Jesus was a soldier. He was a soldier.
this cup from me. But three times also, Mr. Branson, he says, yet here's the answer, y'all. I want your will. Work it off. 